The Arizona Cardinals offense starts with quarterback Kyler Murray. So stopping the Arizona Cardinals offense starts with quarterback Kyler Murray. And the numbers show that keeping him in the pocket, as hard as that can be, is the key to the Washington Commanders getting a win in week four. That and more on today's episode of Locked on Commanders. You are Locked On Commanders, your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, David Harrison, credential member of the media covering the Washington Commanders for Sports Illustrated's CommanderGameDay.com. Here with you every Monday through Friday. I thank you for coming through today. Every day is a special thank you to you. For coming through every single day. Locked On Commanders is your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders. And if you haven't already, you can subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you are listening to this episode in which we are going to make some Washington Commanders predictions. We're also going to talk about the three things that I told you on Thursday the Commanders have to do in order to get a win in Arizona. We're going to break those down even further, all starting with the containment of quarterback Kyler Murray. If you want to get even more out of the Locked On Commanders podcast, all you got to do is become a Locked On Commanders insider by going to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders today. Sign up. You get the first two weeks for free. And from there, you can send me your texts, your questions. I'm going to send you text information all the time, all throughout the week. You're also going to get bonus content, inside information, and access to our insider-only Zoom conferences. Looking to have the next one this Saturday before the game on Sunday. So you'll get access to that as well. So again, become a Locked On Commanders insider. Join subtext.com slash Locked On Commanders to get the first two weeks free. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet with FanDuel and you will get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Go to FanDuel.com to get started today. So every Crossover Thursday, if you didn't see the Crossover Thursday episode yet with myself and Alex Clancy of Locked On Cardinals, please go check that out. But every Crossover Thursday, at the end of the episode, we tell you the three things that each team must do in order to pull off a win in the coming weekend's matchup. For the Washington Commanders, those three things were contain Kyler Murray, be the bully, be more physical, out physical the Arizona Cardinals, and of course, don't let the return to Arizona take over the personality of the football game. So we're going to break that down deeper here in this episode. And of course, that first must do contain Kyler Murray. We kind of go back to week three in Cincinnati Bengals, and the storyline was contain Jamar Chase. There are certain players in the National Football League that you're not necessarily going to stop. You just have to try to prevent them from taking over the ball game. And Kyler Murray is one of those quarterbacks. His athletic ability and his ability to throw the ball, if he's allowed to get it in a groove, get it comfortable in the game, and all those things really allows him to become a danger and, and at, like I said, at times take over the game. This is going to be a home game, which means that home crowd is not going to be making noise for him, not going to be making his life difficult. That's an advantage for him. However, the part that we don't often talk about is that that's an advantage for the defense as well. Their ability to communicate, talk to each other, gets a little bit easier when the opposing offense has their audience uh, quieter. So that is something that the commander's defense needs to take advantage of, communicate clearly, be on the same page, and try to keep Kyler Murray as contained as possible. One of the key things there, look for this defense to not rush past the quarterback. More stationary quarterbacks like Tom Brady of old, uh, even Kirk Cousins nowadays, all that stuff, you can kind of rush around them, maybe behind them, try to beat that tackle uh, to the outside and above and crash back down on top of them. And you can get away with that a little bit. Quarterbacks like Kyler Murray and Jaden Daniels with the Washington Commanders, you rush past them. That's when they make you punish or make, that's when they punish you with their feet, not just as runners, but also as mobile passers to extend plays. Jaden Daniels getting better at that. Kyler Murray, pretty good at that already. So among quarterbacks in the NFL with at least 37 pass attempts this season, there are 32 of them. In the middle, uh, Kyler Murray is about in the middle of the pack when it comes to completions from the pocket. So not great, but not terrible. He's also only completing 68.8% of his passes from the pocket, which I say only because 70% is kind of the minimum target for any NFL quarterback. Kyler's right there, so it's not only as in he's terrible. But again, 68.8% completion from the pocket, which is actually higher than his season total if you look at his stats. But that's because he has an 81% completion game against the Los Angeles Rams in Arizona's one win so far this season. Now, in the two losses that they, they experienced, he had completion rates of 61.8% and 67.7%. So that's where you get the, the average. That's where you want Kyler Murray. He's throwing from the pocket, completing less than 70% of his passes. You'd love to have him complete less than 60, less than 50, but at least less than 70. Now, beyond that, 
He's liking he's he's likes working these short areas of the field more often than not. Most of his targets are going to the short areas of the field, but the large majority of his throws coming from zero to nine yard range. The smallest percentage of those are coming over the middle. So he's not targeting the middle as much as he's targeting the perimeter. Partially, I think, because defenses are leaving spies and guys in the middle of the field to kind of try to prevent his scrambling ability. But even as you get deeper down the field, he likes the boundary. He likes to throw over the outside shoulder. Why? Because it's harder to throw interceptions there. A lot of times, DBs, if they get a PBU, they're probably not coming down with the football, at least not inbounds. Now, compared to the rest of the league, Kyler Murray is most on target when throwing to the right intermediate part of the field, and he has a completion percentage of 79% when doing so. So again, likes the boundaries, likes the right intermediate part of the field. Ironically, his short right on target rate is actually uh, the only short zone where he's not at least average or above average compared to his NFL peers. And the short area on the left side of the field is where he's the most on target with his pass. So left side of the field, short, right side of the field, intermediate. Those are kind of the two spots where Kyler Murray, compared to other NFL quarterbacks, is most on target uh, in, in games. Finally, he's only thrown outside the pocket this year 13 times. So most of the time he gets out of the side of the pocket, he's actually going to take off. But he likes to look to stay active uh, as a passer. I say only 13 times just because I believe most people, when you think about Kyler Murray, would imagine he probably has more attempts than that. Um, but he likes to stay active as a quarterback as much as possible. He's not going to be the kind of guy that gets out of the pocket and just looks to just hit upfield uh, and get going. So he's going to try to stay alive. So that's incredibly important for defenders in the secondary to understand. You've got to cover those routes and those receivers as best you can from, from snap to whistle. You can't give up on a route. Um, he's thrown to the right outside the pocket. He's thrown to the right side seven times. He's gone to the left side three times. Or rather, his platform has gone to the right side seven times. Platform has moved to the left time six times. So he doesn't have just like a one side that he can go to. He'll go to either side of the pocket when he's flushed. Of the 13 passes that he's thrown outside the pocket this season, he's completed nine of them. All nine of those completions have been successful plays. So successful plays on first down, we're looking for 40% of the yardage or more. Second down, you're looking for 60% of the yardage to gain or more, 100% on third down and obviously 100% on fourth down. So all nine of his completed passes when throwing from outside of the pocket have been successful in relation to what down and yardage they've been facing. Five of those passes, those completions, have gone for 10 yards or more, and two of them have been explosives 20-plus yards or more. That's 15%. That's a 15% explosive rate when throwing outside the pocket. Now, 73 times he's launched from inside the pocket. Six of those passes have been explosives. That's an 8% rate. So the explosives pass percentage or, or chances for the Arizona Cardinals almost doubles when Kyler Murray is throwing from outside the pocket. Now, part of that is because he's extending the plays, and that gives receivers opportunities to get open more. So, again, you need to contain him. You need to try to make him throw as on time as possible. Don't allow him to escape and extend those plays because that's when the Arizona Cardinals offense because it becomes increasingly dangerous in the passing game. And then, of course, you've got Kyler Murray, the runner, who has the highest yardage per attempt average when scrambling among quarterbacks who have scrambled at least 10 times this season. So you are literally facing the most dynamic passer who turns into a rusher this season, even more than Jaden Daniels so far. So keeping Kyler Murray in the pocket, absolutely imperative, absolutely critical. You're not going to be able to do it from a down-to-down -down perspective, but the more you can do it, the more you have the opportunity to bottle, bottle up the Arizona Cardinals passing attack, and that's going to help you have an opportunity to win. But the Cardinals do have a rushing attack that they like to use early but you can get them off of that rushing attack if you approach it correctly in the beginning of the game. That is coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode of Locked On Commanders is brought to you by Robinhood. And with Robinhood Gold, you don't need a silver spoon to eat up the financial favors of the 1%. Robinhood Gold allows others to get the rates and perks usually reserved for the high society. Now, the resourceful individual with Robinhood Gold can earn the very liberal rate of 4.5% APY on uninvested cash, receive unlimited 1% deposit bonuses, and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost on an IRA account. Robinhood Gold provides the privileges of a high net worth for any net worth. These generous benefits are now available for only $5 a month. The new gold standard is here with Robinhood Gold. Sign up at Robinhood.com gold. Again, Robinhood.com slash gold. Terms apply. For product-specific disclosures, visit Robinhood.com slash gold. Investing involves risk. Rate may change. Gold membership is offered by Robinhood Gold, LLC. Today's episode is also brought to you by PrizePix. And PrizePix is the number one daily fantasy sports 
with over 5 million active members, including yours truly. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. And unlike other apps on prize picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you got to do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and then watch your winnings roll in. And this month, this is the last weekend to get involved in it. One Caleb Williams passing yard gets you one win on prize picks every week in September. That's right. Only one yard gets you an automatic win every football weekend in September. And you only need two to six to play. So you only need one to five more to capitalize on this deal. That's four free weeks of wins. So don't miss that because when September is over, the deal is over. And now you can win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. It's a fun app to make your picks on. So download the Prize Picks app today. Use the code Locked On NFL and get $50 instantly when you play $5. That's code Locked On NFL on Prize Picks to get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even have to win to receive the bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks run your game. Diving deeper into our must-dos for the Washington Commanders to continue their winning streak. Two games is a winning streak, right? I think three games is more of a winning streak. But what the Washington Commanders must do to, to beat the Arizona Cardinals in week four here on the road. Coming to you from, I'm in Mesa, Arizona, right outside Tempe, Arizona, where the Cardinals or the Commanders are practicing at the Arizona State Sun Devils facility. Number two. So number one, contain Kyler Murray as best you can. You're not going to be able to do it all game long, but as best you can, contain Kyler Murray because he's a threat. Anytime he gets outside the pocket. Number two, don't get out physical. The Arizona Cardinals, really? I mean, like, everybody's kind of, right? The, the NFL, football is just a physical game. But when you talk about the bare minimum physicality of football and then above that uh, being a physical football team, James Conner is basically the representation of the Arizona Cardinals' ability to be physical on offense. Um, and so if you – prevent James Conner from having success trying to be that physical presence against you, then the Arizona Cardinals have shown a tendency this season. It's only three weeks, so it's a short period of time, but they've shown the tendency this season to kind of go away from that. And I think that's something that the Washington Commanders need to take advantage of. So far this season, James Conner ranks fifth in carries in the first quarter this season. So there are only four other running backs in the entire NFL getting more touches than James Conner in first quarters of games so far. That's how much the Arizona Cardinals like to try to get him rolling early. However, he's 11th in yards per carry in the first quarter this season. So it's not working as well as they would like it to, which is possibly why he's 21st in the league in carries per quarter after the first quarter. So that usage goes way down after the first quarter. And there's probably other reasons as well. But you have to think that the fact that he is not matching his yards per carry with the amount of carries he's getting, uh, as far as the NFL comparisons go, is part of that reason. Now, he's only got one game over 100 rushing yards so far this season, and it was their incredibly dominant, I think it was 41-10 to 10 win, over the Los Angeles Rams in Week 2. In that game, James Conner had the fourth most rushing attempts of Week 2 in the first quarter. And in that game, he gained the fifth most rushing yards per carry of Week 2, seven yards per carry. So that's the week where James Conner matched, not exactly, but matched closely, his yards per carry rank with his carries rank and from there, he finished with the sixth most carries in the second, third, and fourth quarters combined in week two. And he finished just behind Derrick Henry and Alvin Kamara in yards per carry among backs at at least 15 after the first quarter. So that's the game where James Conner really showed him. That's the game where the Arizona Cardinals really took advantage of establishing the physicality with James Conner as their running back and then having success doing so so they continue that on throughout. And of course, if you're having that success as a physical run, run team, and in a physical run game up front, and that opens up play action. That condenses the defense, forces them to fill the box more, which leaves you more open spaces on the perimeter. Marvin Harrison ends up having an incredibly successful game in that game. Uh, uh, Kyler Murray ends up having an incredibly successful game as well. And just all around, the Arizona Cardinals were able to have a more holistic approach to attacking the Los Angeles Rams. In these other games, their two losses, however, James Conner not nearly as successful in setting that physical tone and having that physical dominance over the opponent, and you see the Arizona Cardinals go away with it. So the bottom line is, or go away from it, rather. So the bottom line is, if he gets going early, they're going to stick with him. If he doesn't, they will go away from him. And even though they're working rookie Trey Benson in more, and I like Trey, and I think he can do a lot of good things, it mostly what it mostly does is it keeps the ball in Kyler Murray's hands. And I get it. Kyler Murray's a very good quarterback. He's a very effective quarterback himself. And in some ways, you almost say, we don't want the ball in Kyler Murray's hands. But in this case, you actually do because 
if you're if they're getting out physical up front and they go away from James Conner, believe me, the rest of the team knows it too. We're not being physical enough. We're not being successful physically and psychologically. That does something to a team and it does something to the opponent that is being the bully in that sense. So the Washington Commanders need to be that bully, force the Arizona Cardinals to go away from James Conner by stopping him in the first quarter because he's going to get touches in the first quarter. They're going to try to do it. And if you let yourself get pushed around, you're going to get pushed around all day long. If you can simplify the opposing offense, it simplifies things for Joey Jr. And even if the quarterback is a guy who's dynamic, like Kyler Murray, anytime you can simplify an offense, you're doing something better for yourself. So that is what you need to do, number two. Number three, and this one's going to be harder to quantify, right? Because like they're never going to come out and say, like, yeah, yeah, we did this because of this, and we did this because of that. But don't let the return to Arizona cloud things. And I'm not talking about Jane Daniels. Like Jane Daniels started his college career at Arizona State. We know that. He transferred to LSU, goes on to win the Heisman, goes on to become the number two overall pick in the NFL draft, and has done great things. So, yes, he's returning to Arizona. Yes, he was asked about it. But really, it's not that big of a deal for him. It's not that big of a deal for this Washington Mayor's team for Jaden to be returning to Arizona State. However, it is a bigger deal for Cliff Kingsbury to be returning to face the Arizona Cardinals, the team that he was the head coach of for multiple seasons, brought Kyler Murray into the NFL, kind of hitched his wagon to Kyler Murray, uh, and he said himself on Thursday, basically put his reputation on Kyler Murray in the NFL. They had some good moments. They had some bad moments. They had some good years. They had some bad years. Ultimately, as it happens in the National Football League, Cliff Kingsbury, when the things don't go right, he ends up being the one fired, spends a year out of the NFL. Now he's back as the offensive coordinator. Uh, Kyler Murray met with Arizona media this week before Cliff met with us this week and did a really good job. I thought there was kind of a moment where people were like, oh, did he wink and, and all this other stuff. I think Kyler Murray basically did a good job of not really poking the bear and not saying, you know, oh, I hate that guy. And, oh, I hope we beat the brakes off of him and this team and, and all that stuff. I thought Kyler did a pretty good job of dodging any, you know, incendiary uh, opportunities. but. And well, and Cliff Kingsbury did the same. In fact, Cliff Kingsbury, when he was asked about, you know, whether or not, you know, there's any hard feelings or anything, says he still owns his house in Arizona, that famous COVID NFL draft house that went so wildly popular. He still owns that house, still calls this, you know, partially his home. So he loves Arizona, said he still appreciates the organization for giving him the opportunity, becoming the first college coach to get fired and then hired into the NFL. I uh, remember a lot of people didn't really have great vibes about that, but he still says he has a, a lot of love for Kyler for the Arizona Cardinals, all that stuff. And that's great. But you still got fired from this place. And a lot of people, like your reputation got tarnished uh, in this place. So he's a human being. So even though he's not going to say it on the record, just you, you understand as a human being, he wants to beat this team. And that's great. But beat this team doing what you've been doing already this season. Call plays to your quarterback strengths. Call plays to what your team is doing, how effective they're being and lean on that run game as much as you can. Austin Eckler being out is a huge, huge thing. But you still got Brian Robinson. Jeremy McNichols still has some ability. We'll see who they call up. They're, like I said, you can make a case for Michael Wiley. You can make a case for Chris Rodriguez. But at the end of the day, do what's best for the team. Don't allow yourself to get wrapped up in, I'm going to take a big shot here because I want to I want to show them or I want to score against them or things like that. Don't let the emotions of being back in Arizona cloud what you're doing as an offensive coordinator and i think that he's got a good group a group around him dan quinn is a good leader for him anthony lynn and brian johnson in his ear as his you know pass game and run game coordinators certainly gonna be able to help him do that so as long as they can do that then they have that opportunity to go get the win so those are the three things the washington planners have to do in order to get a win out here in arizona this week will they be able to do enough to actually get that win i'm going to share my predictions with you coming up next on today's episode of locked on commanders Part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we're doing that thanks to our friends from FanDuel. NFL fans, you can start this season with a big return from FanDuel. And FanDuel, of course, is America's number one sports book. When you get the hunch in the middle of a game, you can go to FanDuel. You can check out the latest stats. You can view the play-by-plays. And you can get so, so much more from the exact same page where you are placing your bets every week. And you can get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. So the Washington Commanders are currently three and a half point underdogs this week against the Arizona Cardinals. So if you think they're going to win this game or they're going to lose by less than three and a half points, you can take that bet for $5. If it's your first bet, you'll get that $200 bonus bet deal. The over-under on that game is 50.5 points. So if you think the two sides are going to combine to score more or less than 50.5 points, Again, you make that same $5 bet there. 
and win or lose, you get that bonus. Take, so take full advantage of this latest opportunity by going to FanDuel.com and downloading America's number one sports book. Wrapping up today's episode of Locked On Commanders, wrapping up the week here at Locked On Commanders, and we're going to do so by making our predictions. So through three weeks, I am 2-1 and one straight up on the year. I predicted the Buccaneers to beat the Washington Commanders. Unfortunately, I was right there. I predicted the uh, Commanders to beat the New York Giants. Fortunately, I was right there. And I did predict the uh, Cincinnati Bengals to beat the Washington Commanders on Monday Night Football just this week. Fortunately, I was wrong there. So 2-1 and one on the year straight up. I am 3-0 and oh against the spread, however, because uh, – or no, I'm 2-1 and one against the spread as well. Sorry, I was about to brag on myself there, but I'm 2-1 and one against the spread. Um, I did count the commanders to cover the spread against Cincinnati Bengals, and since they won, they covered the spread. New York Giants, same thing. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, however, I, I called for them to cover the spread, lose the game. They did not cover the spread, and they lost the game. So 2-1 and one on the year straight up, 2-1 and one against the spread for whatever that's worth. I don't claim to be a betting expert, so – I give you the data just for general purposes, not to tell you that I'm a betting expert and you should just do whatever I say. Trust me, I lose more than uh, I win. But the Commanders are three and a half point underdogs in this game. And look, I said it to Alex Clancy during the crossover. I don't look at the Arizona Cardinals team and see a lot of things where I just go, man, like this team can't possibly stop this guy. You look at Kyler Murray and again, you have to contain him. You're not going to be able to just flat out stop him. But he's also a quarterback, right? He's going to touch the ball every single snap in the game. So there's not many games there's not many many you know opportunities where you look at a quarterback and say well you just stopped him from producing all all together like you know even even your your worst quarterbacks in the nfl are going to get some yards make some plays here or there um the last quarterback i can remember just having a completely meltdown day was actually andy dalton when he was with the Bengals. Uh, i think it was like a monday night game and just completely ruined my fantasy football weekend but that's you know neither here nor there um, so I look at the arizona cardinals and i just i don't see you know i see things i'm concerned of right marvin harrison against the secondary uh, Kyler Murray escaping the pocket and, and doing damage. James Conner being able to be physical and out physical to Washington Commanders defense. And if that happens, are they able to rebound enough to keep the score low? Because the Arizona Cardinals would love to shorten this game by possessing the ball for a lot of the clock as well. But I don't see anything where I say there's just no way they're going to be able to do this, right? Like Jamar Chase, I told you guys, like Jamar Chase is going to get numbers. He's going to get some numbers. The key is not letting him have so many numbers that he takes over the game. This Arizona Cardinals defense, I, I wouldn't sit here and tell you like James Conner is going to get at least 50 yards rushing. I will say that if he gets 125 yards rushing or more, I feel like the commanders probably lose this game. Um, so, But I can tell you that there's a, a likelihood or a reality where they're able to keep them under that number. So overall, I've got the commanders winning this game 24 to 17. I think there's going to be an opportunity for the Arizona Cardinals to probably get a field goal somewhere that would make it 24-20 or something like that, but they bypass it, go for it on fourth down. Hopefully the, the commander's defense steps up and that's where this, you know, seven point spread uh, for the commanders comes in. But again, if you believe I'm going to be right, you don't have to bet the commanders to win by seven. You just bet them to win straight up or bet them to win uh, three plus plus the three and a half points. And if they win, you're right anyway. If they lose by a field goal, you're still right. If they lose by more than a field goal, that's when you would lose that bet. So looking at some prop bets, the over under is 50.5 total points. My prediction is 50, is 41 total points. So obviously I'm taking the under. On that, and then looking at some prop bets uh, for players specifically that I'm taking, and I'm taking my three game parlay. Noah Brown individually is a plus 390 to score a touchdown at any point in this game. So if you bet $100 and he scores, you would win $390. You don't have to bet $100, but that's just the easiest way to kind of give you the reference of bet toward and uh, bet uh, towards the earnings. Jane Daniels has a minus 440, has minus 440 line. Uh, to to throw at least one touchdown pass. So if you bet $440, you would win $100. Uh, and the odds on Kyler Murray to throw for at least 200 yards is set at minus 270. So if you bet $270, you would make $100. So as a three-leg parlay, that's what I'm betting. I don't bet these individually. This is my three-leg parlay. You make a bet that all three of those things will happen like I do. The odds are plus 492, which means if you put $100 on it, you're going to win $492 if all three of those things happen. I'm not that rich, so I'm putting $10 on it, and I'm looking to make $49.23 if all three of those hit. So that is my prediction for this weekend's uh, competition. I am planning on doing a bonus Saturday episode. Uh, we'll see how the day goes. We'll see how the schedule unfolds. But if I have the time to do it, I do plan on doing it. And if I can do that, we're going to talk about Derek Forrest, and we're going to talk about the offensive line a little bit as well as the final injury report. So come back for that. If I don't get a chance to drop the episode, I will write up some of the stuff I got on Derek Forrest 
uh, at some point here over the weekend before the game. And of course, if I don't get to do the bonus, I will talk to you next time after the game, hopefully following the Washington Commanders third straight win of the season going streaking. In the meantime, if you've got questions or comments, all you got to do is text me. And to do that, all you got to do is become a Locked On Commanders insider at joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders. For your next listen, check out the Locked On NFL podcast. In the morning, Madman Tyler Rowling kicks you off with a double shot of NFL espresso. And then in the afternoon, you head to the barbershop with Tony Wiggins for some real NFL talk. It's the all-new Locked On NFL, and it is twice per day. As always, thank you for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day. Every day, every day, or thanks for coming through on a regular basis like you do. And until we speak again, if you're out and about, please be safe, be kind, and I will see you next time for another episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.